Okay, everybody, this is Moody Dashcam. If you enjoy these videos, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. I also have an Instagram and TikTok, both at Moody Dashcam. I post on those daily. All right, let's get into it. Today we are in Lake Success. We're going to be going to a bunch of locations that have to do with Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street. Many of you probably know of him from his movie that came out. It was very big at the time. You know, 2013 it came out. Uh, we're going to be going to visit the office of Stratton Oakmont, where pretty much the whole movie takes place. All the fraud and stuff like that. And uh, then we're going to be visiting to hopefully get a good look at the house that he lived at in Old Brookville. And then the house that they shot the movie at in Oyster Bay. So, should be pretty interesting. I'm going to make the right out of here and then... Hopefully I can get into the office complex. There's not like a, a little gate, but we will see. So a little bit of history on Jordan Belfort. He was born in the Bronx. He was raised in Bayside, Queens. He started like his first real money-making thing. Wow, this road's terrible. His first real money-making venture, uh, selling ices on the beach. Oh, it looks like we get it. It's a Sunday, so. Selling ices on the beach. Eventually, he um, saved up like $20,000. All right, this is the building. 1979 Marcus Avenue in Lake Success. We're going to do a little loop around. No one's here. This is fun. When I watched the movie, I always pictured that the office was in uh, Manhattan. I don't know why. I guess like Wall Street. I don't know. But yeah. So it's here. It's just in this little area in uh, in Long Island, Nassau County. But like I said, he started selling ices on the beach on Long Island. Um, and he saved up like 20 grand. And then he wanted to go to dental school. And then one of the first things one of the guys said is, uh, the golden age of dentistry is gone. If you're here to make money, um, go find something else to do. So he heard that and he found something else to do. So he started a, um, a meat and fish selling business, door-to-door -door salesman type uh, situation, where we're in like a whole big office park right here. Um, yeah, he would sell meat and fish door-to-door. -door. Apparently he was doing really good in the beginning. He was do selling like uh, 5,000 pounds of meat and fish a week. Uh, that, that business ended up failing. I don't really know how if he was doing that well. But so he was 25 years old when that failed. And then he, with the help of a friend, got a job at a firm on Wall Street. And then in the um, crash of 87, he lost his job, he was fired no fault of his own, just uh, how it goes. Then, um, in 1989, he started Stratton Oakmont, which is a very, uh, it's a very nice sounding name. I think he combined the names of two companies that he uh, either previously worked for or he bought the two companies and merged them. I forget the exact... Uh, the exact way he came up with the name, but he does say it in the in the movie. Oh, well, I guess Leonardo DiCaprio says it in the movie. All right, next we're gonna go to Five Pin Oak Court. His old Brookville house. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a good look at it. It's a little bit of a drive here, so I'll speed this up. I'll give you a little bit of uh, his story as I'm driving. Um, so yeah, he started in 1989. Ever since he started, um, he was under constant scrutiny by the authorities. I mean, he was just like a slimy guy to begin with. Um, it said that investors lost upwards of $200 million with uh, it's like scamming techniques called a pump and dump. If you look that up on Google, it'll give you a little bit of a background on what that is. It's kind of a common stock scam where you pump up the price of the stock and you dump it on somebody. And 
It's a good way to scam people out of money. You could do it with uh, to the tune of 200 million. And then in 1996, uh, the company was put out of business. And then in 1999, oh, this is all happening while uh, Jordan Belfort is in a drug-fueled party binge. Just like crazy, taking quaaludes, cocaine, pretty much anything he get his hands on, really. Uh, then in 1999, Belfort was indicted for securities fraud and money laundering. Alright, I'll speed this up and we will end up at his house shortly. Everyone that pays close attention probably already noticed that from my last video, I didn't even mention it, but um, I fixed my exhaust. Do you hear that or not hear that? That's really what I should be asking. Alright, back to going fast.
Okay, so the GPS says we are three minutes away right now. We're officially in Brookville. These houses are beautiful. Some of them real old style, some of them redone, so they look a little newer. Young's Farm. Farm in Long Island. There's not many of them. Especially, uh, we're well, not out east. Out east, there's more towards the Hamptons and stuff like that. Alright, so he's indicted in 1999 and he cooperates with the government, he cooperates with the authorities and wears a wire and throws a bunch of people under the bus, which I don't really agree with, you know, if you're going to do the shady shit, deal with the consequences, but he was sentenced to four years, he served 22 months, um, one month of rehab, and he owed... A hundred and ten million dollars to uh, his victims, which is obviously a lot of money to pay off. There's some weirdness with him not paying when he should have been paying, and blah blah blah. I didn't really want to get into that too much. It gets a little boring. But yeah, I still I don't believe that he has paid that off to this day. Um, now, while he was in jail, he shared a cell with Tommy Chong. And apparently he's telling Tommy Chong all these crazy stories. And Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong, if you don't know. But he's telling Tommy Chong all these stories. And Tommy's like, you got to write a book, man. So he gets out and he writes his first book, The Wolf of Wall Street, in 2007. After that, he writes another book in 2009 called Catching the Wolf of Wall Street. I think it's kind of more from the authorities' point of view. We're on the road now. And then 2013, the movie comes out. Uh, the Wolf of Wall Street with Leonardo DiCaprio. Scorsese makes it a whole big thing. Here's some of the house. No, not too much of a glare to see that house. Okay. Now, this next house here, 5 Pin Oak Court. This is the house. Let's turn down the driveway. Terrible that the sun's there, but I'll add some pictures in so you guys can get a better idea of what this house looked like. It is a 3.4 million dollar, uh, 8,700 square foot house, cool tennis court, whole nine. I'll put good pictures of it. While we're here, let's look at the other houses. Uh, no good view here. Okay. I'm really surprised the cops haven't been called on me doing this. I have a good excuse. I have a, hey, I have a channel and here's all my notes. That's a house right there. Come on. Oh, so there's two driveways that go into this five panel court. This is one of the other ones. Wow. It's such a shame the camera can't pick this up. I'm going to take a picture with my phone and I'll add it into the video. How about that? There we go. Okay, my next destination is 39 Chestnut Hill Drive, Oyster Bay. That is the house that they used for the movie because they claimed it was more uh, screen friendly. Let's see if there's anything else. So, yes, they moved the movie in 2013. It's just some crazy things that he did while he was. Um, Not Connecticut. Oh, we're only five minutes away. Okay. I'll keep the camera on. We won't go fast. All right. 
Okay, so yeah. Uh, at his prime, he was apparently worth $90 million, which is crazy. That's a crazy net worth. Uh, he had a he had a thousand stockbrokers looking over a billion dollars in investments, which is again very crazy. There's an H1 Hummer behind me. I love those Hummer H1, whatever you want to call them. Uh, a lot of the stuff I'm telling you is in the movie, but it, this stuff really did happen. Uh, he owned the yacht that was originally built for Coco Chanel, which was extended 15 feet, making it a 136 foot yacht then extended another 29 feet, making it a 167-foot yacht by the time uh, Belfort got his hands on it. Um, against Captain's orders, he took it out into the Mediterranean Sea during a storm, and the boat sank right outside of Sardinia, uh, along with his seaplane and his helicopter that were on the boat. Pretty wild. I can't imagine the amount of money that you just lose in that situation. Um, he owned a 1991 Ferrari Testarossa that was actually in the movie and is being sold right now. Um, a 1989 Lamborghini Countach, which is, he drives in the part of the movie when he takes too many quaaludes and crashes it. Um, watch for motorcycles, everyone. Yeah, he takes too many quaaludes and crashes it. In real life, he was driving a Mercedes when that actually happened, because that's a true story also. I looked up just a bunch of the crazy stuff that he did. Turn here. The odds that we see anything in this house are slim too, I'll be honest with you guys. But I will, I'll add all the pictures that we need. Um, it's said that he earned $50 million a year, once made $12 million in three minutes. Wild. Um, he one time had a $700,000 hotel bill. I don't even know how you have a hotel bill. That's $700,000. Um, let's see what else is on my list here. It's a nice hill. Normally my, my, my exhaust would be screaming here. Um, he told a woman in his office that he would give her $5,000 for a boob job if he could shave her hair her whole head down to like nothing. She agreed. Um, he charged prostitutes to his company card, even writing it off on taxes. Um, he landed his helicopter in his backyard with one of his eyes closed because he was too stoned and he was seeing double vision. Um, the cops knocked on his door uh, and arrested him for seven accidents that he didn't even know that he got into the night before which is the incident of him on the Quaaludes in the movie, that, that very funny scene. Uh, this is another scene in the movie. He pushed his wife down the steps and then took his daughter, put it in his car in the front seat with no seatbelt and drove through the garage door from the inside out. He said he had sex with his wife on top of $3 million cash. I mean, we gotta look at this house. We have to look at this house. Oh, I want to go in the driveway a little bit. Is that crazy? It's not that crazy, right? That's about as far as I want to push it here. People at home, I see cars. Yes, yeah, so he had sex with his wife on top of $3 million cash. Uh, he woke up a secretary once at 4 a.m. Because he was in London and he ran out of drugs. So he wanted an emergency re-up. She sent drugs uh, on a Concord over to him that night. Also in his office, this is a famous scene also, um, he threw little people at a bullseye just for fun. Oh, this is the house. Nice. We can actually get a good view of it. So this is the on-screen house. Now this house is worth $4.5 million. Uh, 12.7 thousand square feet. Ridiculous house. 
pool, tennis court, all that stuff. I'll put pictures of this house in also. I mean, don't we all want to live in a place like this? Let's see this. This looks like a, a drug kingpin lives here. With the fountain right in the middle. Statement house. All right, that is pretty much everything I have to tell you about Jordan Belfort and the Wolf of Wall Street. Obviously, not everything fits in, inside a video like this. If you want more info, he has a podcast. Um, he has the book, two books, the movie, all that stuff. All right, I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.